after 18 years of being a happy joint smoker, I recently converted to dry vapes. And it's because of you guys. I'm Katherine Goldberg. After I made that video, the Sativa scam, that got quite a bit of attention, I started to receive these emails from people saying that if you want to get the most out of your energizing Sativas, it's best to vape. Um, that alone was very interesting to me. I have always sort of found this cognitive dissonance between, on one hand, inhaled cannabis, daily inhaled cannabis has been profoundly helpful for my life profoundly. There's no debate about that. However, daily combustion is, is a net negative. And it's always been sort of this balance between how do I juggle both? And in the past, I've tried to switch to vaping, but the truth of the matter is I love smoking joints. I love the ritual of rolling it up, taking a break outside. I love the smell. And it wasn't until I was able to replace that ritual did anything really click. So I'm going to share five reasons why I switched to vaporizing from joints. And if you guys want to share your experience with it too, that would be fabulous. And thank you for telling me about this because it really is a complete game changer to get the most out of your sativa flower completely. So the terpenes typically associated with sativas, limonene, pinene, terpinaline, actually weigh less than myrcene and linalool, which makes them more volatile. So even before combustion, those sativa terpenes are the first to go. Then adding combustion and a lot of those terpenes are destroyed instantly. Um, meaning that you're sort of left with a more sedating, stony high. Um, I have switched to vaporizing at a very low temperature to start, 330, and I just felt very energized, very clear-headed, sort of just a sense of elevation, but not a sense of high or stoned in the slightest. Um, I thought that was a very interesting observation. The second reason I switched to drier vaping is for the preservation of minor cannabinoids. And originally, this is because I'm very interested in CBG. We've talked about this in both the focus and the pain episodes. Um, CBG is a minor cannabinoid. It's becoming really popular because it helps with focus and gut health. And those are two of the things that I've struggled with in the past. So I look for products that are high in CBG sometimes. And CBG um, is also the first to go when combustion occurs. So smoking a joint of a high CBG flower, yeah, I may get some of the benefits, but there's more that I could be getting. And when I looked into this, what was really interesting is that when combustion occurs, and THC, CBD, the other cannabinoids are destroyed immediately, you're actually not getting all the THC available into your bloodstream, right? But when you vape, because combustion isn't occurring, you're actually absorbing a great deal more of the THC. Um, I was surprised that from a very small amount, I felt when I boosted up the temperature, by the way, to 340, 350, 365, I felt like I had sort of smoked a whole really good joint. Um, again, something that was interesting. Um, the next two reasons I switched to drier vaping have to do with health and none of them have to do with lung health. So I was reading that heart disease is what kills the majority of us. It kills like one person every 34 seconds or something. And I was curious, what is the single most effective intervention one can do to prevent heart disease? And I learned that it's to stop smoking. And I kind of looked into that. And it, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what you're smoking. The fact that combustion is occurring, the byproduct of combustion is carbon monoxide and free radicals. And of course, it's not like you smoke and you're going to like 
keel over. That's not how it works. Like it builds up in your system over a lifetime. So that was sort of the tipping point for me where I was like, look, like I exercise daily. I meditate daily. I cut out ultra processed foods. I'm doing literally everything I can to feel my best. But if I continue smoking weed, am I really moving in a direction that aligns with my values? Um, and it also, you know, uh, every once in a while, one of those viral studies will go around being like, weed causes heart disease. And all the stoners, including me, are like, no, 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 no. And the fact of the matter is that it's not that it's weed, it's that it's combustion paired with various risk factors and lifestyles. Um, and in case you're curious, the one thing that you can do to prevent heart disease, the single most effective thing you can do, like smoking is the single most effective thing you can not do, is exercise. And of course, we've talked about how weed promotes movement and so sort of a sense of joy and gratitude in movement. It all goes together. So the fourth reason, um, and there are only five, is because of skin health. So I have read over the years um, in like the over 30 skin community that smoking really takes a toll on your skin. And I sort of didn't want to believe it because I find the effects of cannabis to be so profound that they outweigh anything I've noticed. However, I looked into the mechanism and again, it's of this carbon monoxide byproduct and the free radicals and what that has to do with collagen. And it's just one of these things where I'm like, is this a small sacrifice I could make? Is it even a sacrifice? Am I actually upgrading my experience? Um, and I thought that was interesting. And the fifth and final reason, and I think the one that maybe will resonate with everyone listening is that since I started using a dryer vape, I have cut my uh, consumption down by, I'm just going to be conservative here, 80%, which was not my intention in the slightest. Since I started working with a private grower, uh, um, the amount and the cost isn't an issue anymore. So I always sort of felt like because I had this giant jar of weed in the house that I should be rolling up these giant joints and I would smoke and I would get my work done and feel great. Um, but since I switched to this dryer vape and I got one, I'm going to talk more about the one I bought and why, and what I think about it. Um, but the bowl size is a 0 0.2. So that's less than like a baby dog walker joint. And that lasted me three sessions um, over the course of, you know, a bunch of hours. Um, so if you're trying to cut back and to save money, then dryer vaporizing is a really good way to go. What I think stopped me before this time that really clicked was that, again, I really love the ritual of smoking a joint. I love the break. I kind of use it as a transition in my day. Um, and I needed to replace the ritual. And I've had a volcano before. They're great. They're uh, amazing engineering. But the fact of the matter is I like going outside to smoke and to go like interact with other humans and get fresh air. So I needed something portable. And um, I think that was what clicked the most. I think there's still a little getting used to instead of blowing out these big clouds of smoke, you're, it's much less visible, but the high is so much more profound and better and elevated and less sedating. And as you increase the temperature, the high does get more sedating. So I think it's sort of that you start off with this um, very light elevation and then you can move through the whole spectrum. So, I'm thankful that my evolution with cannabis was able to grow and to change. Um, I've been nervous to change it in the past because it's worked so well for me. But after, because of you guys writing in and saying the thing about terpene preservation, um, I'm a convert and I love it. So um, let me know 
which dry vapes you're using. Uh, let me know your temperature preferences. And um, we'll continue this conversation because I think it really um, will benefit a lot of people. Um, and a final note on terpene preservation, storage does matter. I didn't believe it, it matters. So you need to be storing your weed in like a glass jar in a dark place that's preferably a little bit cool if possible. And they have these little packets that you can buy on Amazon, like humidity packets that are for terpene preservation. Throw one of those in the jars. When you open it, it smelled like 2007. It was like delightful. So it, it really is about getting the most out of your cannabis in a way that serves you. So thank you for listening and we'll be back next week. Bye.